It's Premier League time with Nottingham Forest. Come and see who I've signed. So as you can imagine, it has been a busy summer transfer window. We spent £69 million and brought in £36 million. Now we'll quickly address some of the outs. Armando Guerrero left to join Anderlecht for a free that could rise to £15.25 million. He was a decent enough centre-back, played plenty of times for us in the Championship, but we had better options at our disposal. Next up was Andres Rivas. He's went to Levante for a fee that could rise to £9 million. Again, a decent enough player. He spent last season out on loan. Um, he was a player I was looking to sell whilst we were in the Championship, but he has now gone, and I'm very pleased to bring in the money. I was starting goalkeeper from last year, Abu Bakar uh, Agu, is left to join Middlesbrough for a fee that could rise to £8.25 million. Quid. Now, he's a decent enough goalkeeper, and if we weren't if we were short on options in terms of being able to bring players in, he would have been a player who I kept at the club, but he's a little bit too good to be our backup for our current level of our squad and getting the money in certainly helped with some of the ins. Emilio Jose Herrero went to join Deportivo like a run year for 5 million quid. Another little decent player. Not interested in starting him. Shuto Shoji, our Japanese striker we signed in the championship, was a little bit of a flop. He's left to join America in Mexico for 3 million pounds. Looking on his attributes, he still looks good to me. Um, it's a bit of a shame that it didn't work out for him at us. And then a few more players left for little bits of fees. Liam Quinn has inexplicably went to Arsenal, 24-year-old English goalkeeper for 325k. It was absolutely dreadful. Did they need a fourth choice? But that pretty much covers the major outs. In terms of the ins, then we'll start with a couple of loan signings. Robert Bennett joined us from Wolves on loan for the rest of the season. I needed an English goalkeeper. I needed him for my squad registration, so I brought him on loan to be back up. I hope I never have to play him in the first team. Marco Antonio has been a boy I have been looking at for a very long time. He did go to Liverpool, so it pretty much priced us out of it in terms of a permanent transfer. But he's going to be joining us on loan, and he's probably going to be our starting right winger for the season. Technically, he's superb, aside from his passing, but we do have him working on that. Flair of 20, physicals to die for. He's pretty much maxed his potential. He's the complete player right now. And yeah, I'm hoping this boy sets the league alight. And then we head of youth development went a little bit nuts with a few signings here. One of which he didn't do. This was me, Georgi Magyar from Arsenal on a free transfer. A free transfer. A free transfer. 23-year-old Dean goalkeeper. Four-star current. Five-star potential. Fantastic player already, and we continue our streak of being able to sign cheap, fantastic goalkeepers. I'm super happy. This is probably our best transfer of the summer, without a shadow of a doubt, at least when you take cost into account. And perfectionist personality is great. I mean, there's just nothing to dislike about this boy. I'm really hoping he is magnificent for us in this season. And then we, we have like three relatively cheap fees for the first team, then three relatively expensive fees for the first team. The first one was a £1.6 million transfer from Kukariki of Jamie Coyle, an Irish striker. Now, he is a little bit raw, uh, but in the areas where it matters, he's absolutely superb. He needs to work on his mental game. His passing's not great, but physically, he's unbelievable. Dribble and finishing and first touch are going to be fantastic. Three and a half star current, four and a half star potential. He comes in straight away as our starting uh, striker. And I'm hoping £1.6 million will just develop into a, a lovely, lovely player. He does have a little snag in his contract of a minimum fee release clause of £27.5 million. Pounds. Uh, not so great. Next up to join us was £1.9 million pounds well spent from Bait. Sergei Yemeljanov, left midfielder. Absolutely unbelievable. Model citizen personality. 18 years old. Technicals to die for. His mentals are fantastic. His physicals are unbelievable. He's classed as a wonder kid by the media. He's got some good player traits which we're working on as well. And he comes in Bizo starting left winger for one point, what was it, nine million quid? I mean, you can't ask for more than that. Yannick Millot is not really a signing I anticipated making, and he's not going to be a first starter. He is very much just a covering option. Starting at right back. And that would be his main player, should he play. But I did sign him with the idea of him just covering basically the entirety of the defence and the defensive midfield position if we're absolutely desperate. I'm not too pleased with his physicals. We've got him working on his acceleration and his pace. Other than that, though, I think he will be a decent enough wing back. Um, but yeah, he's not going to be a starting option. Now we start to the big money. Kianush Karimi, an Iranian defensive midfielder from Stuttgart. 
16 million pounds, 18 years old. Oh, just look at him. He's absolutely a fantastic deep line player. We've got him working on his technique. That's one of the major downsides in this boy 11 technique. But other than that, I am more than happy with everything else I'm seeing. He's well-rounded physically with a 19 balance. His teamwork and vision is fantastic alongside his positioning and work rate. 17 decisions, 14 composure, 13 anticipation, 14 first touch, 14 passing. 18 years old, plenty of potential. Three and a half start already in the squad. Worth 20 million. I mean, he's just an old brenner. Probably our most surprising signing, Hikaru Fukushima from Barnsley. Barnsley. He was a starting centre-back at a Premier League club for years. £22 million brought him in and he is pretty much a complete centre-half. Not expecting this boy to improve too much. Technically, he's already there. Mentally, he's already there. Aside from his aggression, uh, physically, he's there as well. And, I mean, I think he's absolutely fantastic. He will be partnering... David Ballas, who we had at uh, our club last season in the Championship. So he signed for Barnsley last season, 30 million. He was the first choice, started 29 Premier League games. Didn't particularly play that well, which is maybe why they sold him. But uh, £22 million, pounds, I'm more than happy to pay that. Our centre-back options were pretty slim. And I wanted somebody who was going to be a standout central defender. And I'm hoping he will be that man. And finally, our most controversial signing, Hamburg, £25 million. Pounds. Kataro Nakamoto, a central midfielder who my coaches rate as a two and a half star player. He is not a two and a half star player. Do not listen to the star ratings. He looks to me to be absolutely phenomenal. He'll be playing in a central midfield attack and roll. He's a free kick taker. His long shots are fantastic. His passing, his technique, his first touch, his decisions, his determination, his flair, his teamwork, his vision, his balance are all perfect as a playmaker. And then he's got pretty well-rounded mentals aside from that. His physicals are where he needs to work on. I've got him working on his strength and his jumping reach. And 18 years old. I mean, if we compare him to Max Rodriguez, who was our starting central midfielder from last season, who my current coaches rate as a three-star player, and we'll just compare them by attributes. I mean, how is Max Rodriguez even in the same universe? Never mind a half-star better than Nakamoto. Nakamoto will be our starting player and... <laughs> I'm hoping the gamble of 25 million will pay off. So this will be our starting 11. Should everybody be fit? Magyar, our new goalkeeper. Armando Harewood was our starting right back we signed from Leeds last season. He will remain as our starting right back. David Ballas, partner in Fukushima in uh, centre-back. Again, still got a little bit of potential to grow. It will be an area I would like to improve should we get some money in January. Lucas Pinter. Again, another option where I would definitely like to improve. Probably one of the most major places where I didn't manage to find a suitable candidate. And to be quite frank, we ran out of money. <laughs> Karimi, of course, new signing. Nakamoto, new signing. Antonio, new signing. Shane Pierce will keep his spot in attacking midfield. He done fantastic for us last season. He's continuing to improve. He still has a little bit of potential. Welsh, pointless uh, replacing him when we've got other areas where we could be replacing Yamel Genov and Jamie Coyle complete the starting 11, all new signings. So in terms of budgets, we are pretty much spent out. We've only got £1.3 million and 50 k available in the wages. Our balance is currently sitting at minus £7 million. That was projected to rise to £20 million by the end of the season. So we'll have to wait and see how we get on in terms of requesting some extra funds from the board uh, come January. We will take a quick look at the season preview, see where the media are predicting us to finish. They're currently predicting us to finish in 19th, and that is after all of our signs have been completed and everything is sorted. Uh, so we are predicted to get relegated. The highly likelihood is that won't happen. This Nottingham Forest squad, I don't think it's anywhere near as good as Huddersfield, Leeds or Birmingham. It might be on par with Barnsley. And so I'm, that is the target. Aim to beat Barnsley, it's always the target. But uh, that's what I'm hoping for. So we've got... A long season ahead of us. Now, one of our former clubs did get relegated last season. Leeds United got relegated. The first club of ours to fall out of the Premier League after being promoted. And they have sold a lot of my players. Jim Walker, 42 million. Javier Paz, 35. Jorge Flores, 35. Ian Chapman, 37. Kevin Majai, 24. Com Comrade, he was mine. Yes, he was mine. <laughs> 24 and a half. Gilson, 15. Hugh Griffiths, 13. Javier Cortez, 10. Chris Doublebiss, 5. I mean, it's a little bit heartbreaking to see so many of our former players leave Leeds United. But 
they obviously had to rebuild. They've still kept the likes of Roman Vlasek, um, which he should tear up the championship. I did try and sign Federico Piaggio. I just didn't have the fifteen and a half million pounds. Well, twenty one and a half million pounds. Sorry, that's going to take. Which he's probably going to end up going to Napoli. Um, they've still got a couple of my players in the squad, the likes of Pietro Porcino, Richard Granger, Vlasek, of course. Uh, Cedric, I did inquire about Cedric, <laughs> not happening. <laughs> but yeah, a little bit uh, a little bit disappointing to see Leeds get relegated there. Uh, let's have a quick check to see how Barnsley and Birmingham and the others done in the transfer window, see if any of our former players got sold. So of course we signed Fukushima, uh, none of our boys there. They assigned Jim Walker and Jorge Flores from Leeds, so keeping it in the family. Um, not not many of our players left at Barnsley. Let's move on to Birmingham. Any of ours here? I do not recognise any of these names, so probably not. They did sign John Heffern and Holland from Huddersfield. Again, keeping it in the family. Very incestual, these boys. But uh, we'll move on. Check, <laughs> take a look at Huddersfield. Now, Huddersfield still have a lot of my players. They have sold John Heffern and Holland to Birmingham, of course. Aaron Nixon... A Northern Irish wonder kid we signed in January of our final season has been sold to Bristol City for 17 million quid. Jose Mercado was one of ours, been sold to Tondela for 4.8. They assigned Paul O'Neill. So, if you remember Paul O'Neill, you probably don't. He was a Nottingham Forest player when we first signed. His uh, release clause got activated by Fulham and he got relegated. So, I was interested in signing him back, but his, minimum, his relegation release clause was 41 and that's what they wanted and that's just too much for me. So that pretty much covers our former clubs. In terms of the rest of this episode then, we will be playing our first Premier League game in charge of Nottingham Forest. And it's at home against Barnsley. Who would? It's like it was written in the stars. So we get into today's game. Only one change from our best starting eleven. Lewis comes in at left back for the injured Lucas Pinter. Everything else is just how we've talked about. So Barnsley, of course, Hoggy, Flores and Jim Walker were former players from Leeds. Nobody else survives in the Barnsley team from our side. Let's get into the match and see how we get on in our first game in the Premier League. I won three points. First highlight of the game, it's a corner for us. Fukushima gets his head on it, but he can't get it on target. Why, we're all go at the minute. Five minutes in, we have our second highlight. Magia with the ball. Um, just don't mess it up in the defence, lads. Long ball over the top. Jamie Coyle is bri Oh, Jamie. Jamie, man. I know you want 1.6 million, but you should be burying that. Another highlight now, Nakamoto spreading the ball to Yemeljanov on this left-hand side. Back to Lewis, whips it in. Oh, Marcus Antonio, Marco Antonio. Well, it was an electric start, but now time is ticking away. And the first half looks like it's coming to an end without very much happening. And now we have it. Nottingham Forest nil, Barnsley nil. I'm relatively pleased, but I'm not telling them that. Uh, let's kick off again and see if we can have a better performance. Corner, Yemeljanov takes it, it's cleared. Oh, it's going to be a counter-attack, an opportunity for Barnsley. Frankie brings it down this left-hand side. He's got one man in the box, he doesn't need him. He goes for goal himself. Magyar with a decent save. It all comes from our corner, that's not very pleased. Free kick for us, Nakamoto is the man over it. He plays the ball in and goes over the top of everybody. Antonio whips it back in though, Nakamoto is there. And he's worth 25 million already. Kutaro Nakamoto gets his first goal of the season. Antonio with the assist. And we go 1-0 up with only 20 minutes remaining at home against Barnsley. Great cross in. Fantastic finish on his left foot. Right, let's not be attacking anymore, please. 15 minutes to go. We have ourselves another highlight. Nakamoto picking up the ball from a throw-in. Plays in Jamie Coyle in the box. And this is why we paid £1.6 million for him. That finish... Is why we did it. First goal of the season for him, of course. Nottingham Forest 2, Barnsley 0. Nakamoto again involved in the goal. And ha, why? three points is more than I could ask for. So with only 13 minutes to go, we will make some changes. We'll bring on Abdullah Garba for Shane Pierce in the attack and midfield role. Um, I wouldn't mind bringing on Dubanovic. We'll bring uh, take off Jamie Coyle. And I also want to bring on Yannick Miller. Try and get him some game time see if he can improve his, his game. So we've made all three subs. If there is an injury or a red card, we are absolutely screwed. But we have ourselves a highlight instead. Dabanovic, he's been on the pitch about 30 seconds. And uh, that's why he's only been on the pitch 30 seconds. Only injury time remaining in this one. Barnsley have went very attack and we are still unbalanced. Uh, and it seems to be working out pretty well for us as we get ourselves another opportunity. Marco Antonio hits the post when it was easier to probably score. But uh, never mind. 
Nottingham Forest 2, Barnsley 0, first game in the Prem, first three points. Happy, happy days. So after our first game, we're sitting in fifth. I would take that right now if you were to offer it to me. In terms of the next episode, it'll be somewhere around here. I have no idea. Maybe Huddersfield. Maybe Birmingham. Maybe Huddersfield and Birmingham will skip the Leicester game. Play our former clubs because I just like doing that. But anyway, boys, please leave a like. Comment at the bottom if you've got something to say. Get yourself subscribed if you're watching this as an unsubscriber. And uh, until next time, take it easy.